the Orange Bowl. Number six, Tennessee versus number seven, Clemson. So Tennessee and Clemson, here we go. Um, And somewhere Shane Beamer is smiling down, thinking to himself, like, I put you both in this game. (laughs) Um, I can't see this game without thinking about Spencer Rattler and South Carolina and Shane Beamer and beating both of these teams. And these teams were coming down the stretch and – Tennessee clearly had a playoff avenue. Um, They went out. They were going to be in the college football playoffs, save for that really poor performance against South Carolina. Uh, Clemson, you could argue, would have been in the conversation as well for a playoff spot had they not lost to South Carolina before winning the ACC over North Carolina. Okay, so that's where I start. Now let's get into these two teams, okay? Because I think that there's there's a a, a really – Big difference between both of these teams and how their fan base feels about their seasons and the trajectory of where they're going from here. So first and foremost, and you've heard me talk about this a little bit in in previous episodes, but bowl games can really act as like a culmination of the end of a great era for your program or a springboard into the future. And really the first game of the start of into spring football and into the next season And that's where I feel like these two teams are different, wildly different. Let me start with Clemson. In Clemson's perspective, this has been a really disappointing year that is starting to trend up at the end, even with the loss to South Carolina. And the trend up is really about the fact that they get that 11th win, ACC title, and they make the switch at quarterback. And there's been a lot of people, including myself, that thought that they were going to do this a lot earlier. But DJ Uyongalele, you know, gets pulled uh, from that champ game and Cade Klubnik goes in there and they become a better team. And I thought, by the way, we talked about this all the way back. Remember the first game of the year for Clemson and they were facing Georgia Tech and Klubnik gets into the game because DJ wasn't playing that great and they, they were, you know, stagnating, if you will, on offense. And we said to ourselves at that time, like, hey, is Klubnik the better option? I thought he probably should have been given this opportunity a little bit earlier, but he didn't. It happened late, but now there's a lot of optimism moving forward. So in a Clemson, if I'm a Clemson fan, I'm thinking to myself, okay, we're one of the very few teams in the country that winning our conference and 11 games is still a disappointing year, and yet I've got this this entity, this quarterback in Cade Klubnik that's making me very excited for what we could be in the future. He could be returning us to be a legitimate national championship threat in the future. And if he plays well against Tennessee, then that's going to just continue uh, to move upward, that trajectory and that sentiment, that positivity for Clemson. So disappointing year, trending up at the end. Now let's look at Tennessee. If I'm a Tennessee fan, I would say that this was a wildly successful season, right? I mean, if you would have told a a Tennessee fan that they would have done what they did during the regular season, including that epic win over Alabama at home, they would have been like, yes, sign me up. I'm in. And yet, because of the way it ended with South Carolina, not even the Georgia loss, the South Carolina loss. You lose Hendon Hooker to the in- injury, which reminds you this is the end of an era. You're losing the wide receivers, you know, Hi- Hyatt, Tillman, these guys. And you think to yourself, like, well, what are we going to be moving forward? So there was this great breakthrough and a wildly successful season. And then now at the end, it's kind of like, uh, what does this all mean for the future? So two totally different sentiments from fan bases here. If I'm a Tennessee fan, I'm disappointed at the end after a wildly successful season. If I'm a Clemson fan, I was disappointed all year long. We weren't good enough. And now I've got some serious optimism moving forward, in particular because of the quarterback position, which leads me to the quarterback battle. This is a really interesting matchup because of the club neck Joe Milton battle. Okay, so... I think Cade Klubnik is a really good player. Joe Milton, we've seen play now at Michigan. He's had time at Tennessee, so we kind of know what he is. So how is this all going to play out in this specific game? Well, for Tennessee, and I've said this before, and everyone just tried to be like, oh, you know, don't worry. It's just statistics. Like, that's not really a thing. Their pass defense is not good enough. 
All right. And that came back to haunt them against Spencer Rattler and South Carolina. And guess what? Klubnik is a guy, maybe he doesn't have the Rattler ability, but maybe he does. Remember, he comes into that game against North Carolina, and he ended up going 20 at 24. They were really dynamic throwing the football for the first time really all season. And now they're going to be facing Tennessee's passing defense, which is not good enough. I've been saying that all year long, and everyone's been trying to say, like, no, nah, don't worry about that. That doesn't really mean anything. 127th in the country is just not good enough. Okay, so Klubnik and Clemson have the clear advantage in terms of that. When you look at the other side for Tennessee, Joe Milton is a guy that we've seen, as I've said. We've we've seen him at Michigan. We've seen him at Tennessee. This guy is the nucleus of college football. He has got as good of an arm as I've ever seen. Trust me, I've seen you know, I've sat down there on the field in pregame when he was at Michigan and just watched him throw and I'm like, "Oh my gosh." It's totally different than almost any anybody else that I've ever seen. Uh, Josh Allen reminded me of that when I saw him throw in person for the first time. Drew Aller, the young quarterback at Penn State, uh, he's got an arm kind of like that. Um, there's there's not many that I've actually like seen, witnessed in person that that make me just my eyebrows raise and I'm like, oh dear, like that that looks different. That's Joe Milton. The problem is is that he is the nucleus of college football in that he might hit the bull, right? I mean, those of you, by the way, that don't understand this reference that I'm giving, one, you're far too young. Two, watch Bull Durham, because Bull Durham is an awesome movie. And Nuclelouche, Ebby Calvin Nuclelouche, hits the bull with a fastball, right? So, like, this guy has, has a thunderbolt for an arm, and I just don't know about his accuracy. So what does that mean for the game? Well, if I'm the play caller... If I'm coaching Joe Milton, I think it's incumbent on me as the coach to work in easy throws early to try to get his confidence where it needs to be. Okay, so I'm talking about little screens on the outside, things that he doesn't have to think or read something down the field. I'm not going to try to make him make that that secondary read down the field that they're so famous for, that wide receiver read route, that two-man read route. I'm not going to make him do that early. I'm going to try to get him some confidence early, seeing the ball completed. And then once that confidence starts to bleed into the rhythm of his, his game, now I'm going to push the ball down the field. But if they just try to push the ball down the field right away, I just I don't love it. I think Clemson uh, is, is too, what's the word, eclectic on defense, right? They'll give you so many different looks. They'll drop eight in coverage. They'll blitz everybody. They're changing things up all the time. And that can be difficult on Joe Milton. So get him easy wins early. Um, and that could be difficult. Obviously, Jalen Hyatt out, Cedric Tillman out. It's going to be a different wide receiver group moving forward. They've got the true freshman that they're very excited about next season. It's a wait and see for Tennessee for me in this game and for next season. Whereas for Clemson, it seems like they've got the quarterback and the trajectory where this could be the jumping off point to another playoff run, another national championship style run next year. So in this game, Clemson is favored by five and a half and I like Clemson. Okay. Club Nick against that passing defense is why I like Clemson. I like Clemson. Give the five and a half the Tigers win the orange bowl. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoy that clip, make sure you click subscribe somewhere down here from game highlights to exclusive interviews and rankings we've got everything you need as a college football fan right here college football on fox